Hi everyone, I'm Jessica, how are you? Welcome back to my channel. Today we're working on the final week of blocks for the 2024 Scrappy Sampler. So today we're working on block 47. I can't believe we made it to the end after this week. We have four blocks this week instead of three. We have 47, 48, 49, and 50, and then that will wrap it up. So if you were making one of the smaller sizes, you have probably already made enough blocks unless you're waiting to see them all and then you're picking your favorites. Uh, if you're making a queen or larger, you need more than 50 blocks, so you'll have to make duplicates of some. I'm going to do the queen, so I need 56 blocks. So after we complete the 50 this week, I'll still have to go back, pick my six favorites, and make those again. But for today, let's get started with block 47. This block has a couple different things going on, so let's tackle them all one step at a time. The first thing we're going to be making is unit A. Now, unit A looks really complex, but it's not. We're just gonna work it, like I said, one step at a time and get through it. So, the first thing we need to do is make a half square triangle. I have one blue and one pink, and I'm going to lay one on top of the other. Either way is fine. And sew across this edge. Okay, now let's just chain, uh, chain piece this just a little bit. The other thing that we need to do is there are these triangle units that are at the end of each block. Now, if you just refer to the pattern as you're going, it's gonna be really easy to see. One's gonna look like this. And the other one is going to be the opposite. So it's going to look like this. These are actually mirror images of each other when I turn them. So you need to make four like this and four like this. I've already made three of the units and I'm making the fourth with you, so I only have one of each right now. Each unit takes one, uh, one of each. So let's put that one through and then we'll sew this one as well. I'm just going to snip the threads and I'm just going to show you the half square triangle. So like I said, it's a pink and a blue. The blue is going to go on the bottom. I'm just going to trim this overhang first. And the way that this is positioned in our unit A is like this. And it has two pink triangles just like this. So that is how it's supposed to look. So what I'm going to do is take one of them. And I, I like to turn this, so it might seem tricky, but basically we're just sewing this here. I do like to just turn this around. <laughs> um, it helps me uh, line this up better. So what I do is I'm matching the corner first and then these two sides. My sides are going to overhang and that's supposed to happen. Sometimes it's a little wiggly because it's a half square triangle. So let me just get this lined up just right. And then we're going to sew across here. Okay, we're going to open it up. And this is what it's going to look like. See, we got that one unit sewn on. And now we're going to work on this. To trim that overhang, I just close it quick and flip to the back side. And then cut that off. Once that's off, we'll work on getting this on again. So this one's a little bit easier because we don't have to flip it all the way around. I'm just going to turn it this way. And then I'm going to match the corner up here and then I'm making sure both sides are matching. This is what our unit looks like and this is how it will sit in the in the block. But first we just need to trim this. So I open it up and I make sure everything is laying flat and then I just trim right up to it. So this is what we have now, and we already made these two other pieces. Now you just have to look um, at, refer to the pattern to see where they go. We're gonna have the blues kind of standing up like this on each end, and then the whites are sitting um, across the top. So this is what it's supposed to look like. We're just going to sew one on at a time. So the way that I do this to know that it's centered is I have a seam right here, and a seam right here and I nest those two seams. So I start out by nesting the seams and 
what that what that's going to do here though is um, some people might not like this but it's pushing the seam to the white on this uh, I have no problem with that and if you um, want to press it open or something else that's fine but this is the way I do it so my seam is pressed to the white on the top or I should say pushed because I didn't iron it and it's the opposite way underneath and once my middle seams are nesting this will line up perfectly like that and the other side's going to have some overhang and that's just right so we're going to sew across here and then just real quick if I open it this is what it's going to look like we're going to add the other one but first let me just trim this little white that's going to get in the way I'll trim the other corners later but that white will get in the way for us here if we don't trim that one so now we're going to put this one on like this and same thing here my seam on the top one is being pushed toward my white this is lining up perfectly we're gonna sew here and I'm actually just gonna sew till I get to the seam so it holds it in place for me and then I'll just fix this up perfect so this is what our unit is going to look like then. We just need to come around and trim all the overhangs. There's this one in the middle, then there's one at each corner. So here, here, then the other two corners have the same thing. Here, and here. Okay, those are all our little overhangs, and this is what our piece looks like. We need to make four of these. I already have those made. I'm just gonna set them aside. We have another um, thing that we need to make for the block before we can start assembly. So the next thing is a diamond in the square. And here we're not using the stitch and flip method, which we have used before for a diamond in the square. We're using triangles. So this is what our center unit needs to look like. To get these on perfectly, we are using uh, the method we have used before, where we fold everything in half and we make a crease. So right now I'm making creases where my two fingers are. Try to be as accurate as possible when you're folding these because you're actually marking the center and you want everything to lay nicely at the end. So just try to be as accurate as possible. And then I repeat that with the triangles. We're going to sew um, two opposite ones on and then we'll turn it and sew the remaining two. So I'm pressing, finger pressing two triangles and, and two sides. Now, it might be difficult to see on the camera, but I can see here that I have, uh, it is very difficult to see. Once I pick this up and turn it, you'll see it. Um, I have a crease right here, and then I have a crease right here. What I'm going to do is just line those two creases up. I just look at it just to get a little visual. And then I take one and I flip it on top. So this crease here is lined up with the crease on the bottom. And I make sure my edges are straight. And then we sew across here. We're gonna repeat the same thing on the opposite side without, uh, we don't need to trim at this point. So I'm lining up those two creases. That way I know my two middle points are actually centered and in the middle and everything else is laying correctly. Once I sew this other one on, I'm gonna flip it to the back and see these overhangs, we need to trim those away. So let's trim. There we go. And now I'm going to use the back, I'm gonna fold backwards to mark this. So I'm making sure I'm in uh, my square is folded perfectly in half to make a rectangle and then I'm going to finger press the two orange parts right here. I'm just going to hold them for a second and finger press. And once they're all pressed, they'll have those little creases, we're going to repeat what we did before for the triangle. So I'm just going to fold this in half and crease here, hold it for a minute, and then I'll do the same thing. The heat of your finger is what crease it makes this crease in the fabric. and um, it's perfect for lining something up like this. So I'm just finger pressing these two open. And now, just like we did before, I'm matching the creases that we just made, the finger creases. And we're going to sew these blue units on to make our diamond in the square. I'll repeat that on the final side. A 
Okay, now we've made our diamond in the square and it looks like this. So we have those four overhangs to still trim. I like to trim these ones from the front. I just kind of get the pieces to lay flat how they should be laying with my fingers and then I just trim. Okay, one more here. Very good. Okay, now we have all the units ready to assemble our block. So this is going to be the center. I have four squares cut for the corner and then we have our eight units here. And basically the A unit is going to sit like this. Now, depending on what colors you're using, it might be different, but the blue points in toward the center and the white are on the outside. So I'm going to assemble this in a grid, how I assemble all of my blocks. Uh, so first I'm going to start with a top left square and I'm just going to sew these two together. Then I'm going to get another A unit and I'm going to line that up with my center. That's not perfect. There we go, that's better. Okay, take a minute and get these lined up nice. There we go. Then I'm going to take the bottom left corner and another A unit and sew those together. We'll cut the threads and then I'll add the remaining column on. Okay, so that one gets sewn. Have one more A unit here to sew to this middle. And this is what we have so far then. Okay. And we need to sew the two remaining seams. Now this seam is bulky here because you have a lot of pieces of fabric all coming together. So if you wanted to press this seam open, you could do that. That will reduce this bulk and make it lay nice and flat. If you didn't want to do that, that's totally fine. You can press the seams out you can press the seams in towards the middle, whatever uh, works the best for you. I'm trying to figure out what one I like the best here. Usually if you push the seams, the way that you push the seams can affect your point. So if you can see here, if I, have, if I push my seams in toward the center, this point doesn't look nice, it's getting cut off. If I push them out, it looks better. Those line up like almost perfectly. I think I might do that, I think I'm gonna push them out. So then that means that these seams will go in so that they can nest. And again, the other option is to press it open if you want to do that. That will make everything lay nice and flat. I don't love that method. I don't, I don't exactly know why. I just don't. I don't like the idea of it. And actually, let me just sew this and then I'll show it to you. I did them in two different directions here. So on this top one, I'm having this seam go in because this seam is going out. I like the way that looks. But on this one, it was actually the opposite. I liked it better when it went in toward the center. I had a really nice point there. So this one's going the other way. And that doesn't matter. For this quilt, it doesn't matter because these blocks are going to be framed. And that means that no seams of this block are going to be interacting with any other block next to it. Um, so you can do anything you like with the seams here um, because it really doesn't matter for the block's neighbors. So I'm just going to make sure that when I sew this one, I do the same thing I did before because I want the block to lay flat. So I'm making sure my seams are going the same way they did before, which is one will go in and one will go out. So I did that here. You can see I have one going out this way and one going in. And then this is what the block looks like. And that wraps it up for block 47. I really like this one. It seems really, really tricky, uh, but if you just take each component one step at a time, it's really not bad at all. If you have any questions on how to make this, just let me know. And if not, I'll see you back here soon. Thanks for following along.